Elasticsearch users create an index, the most important question they have is how many shards should I use? In this video, we're going to explain to you why you need a sharding strategy. You'll also learn how design and performance are impacted by the number of shards you use. Let's get started with why you need a sharding strategy. We can't stress enough how important it is to get your shard allocation right. A major mistake could cause scaling problems in a production environment that maintains a growing data set. If you have some experience with Elasticsearch, you might want to skip to the next section. If not, let's quickly run through the following definitions. An Elasticsearch cluster consists of one or more nodes and is identifiable by its cluster name. A node is a single Elasticsearch instance. In most environments, each node runs on a separate box or virtual machine. In Elasticsearch, an index is a collection of documents. Because Elasticsearch is a distributed search engine, an index is usually split into elements known as shards that are distributed across multiple nodes. Finally, Elasticsearch creates five primary shards and one replica for each index by default. Allocating multiple shards and replicas is the essence of the design for distributed search capability. It provides for high availability and quick access in searches against the documents within an index. The main difference between a primary and a replica shard is that only the primary shard can accept indexing requests, but both replica and primary shards can serve querying requests. In the diagram shown here, we have an Elasticsearch cluster consisting of two nodes in a default shard configuration. Elasticsearch automatically arranges the five primary shards split across the two nodes. There is one replica shard that corresponds to each primary shard, but the arrangement of these replica shards is altogether different from that of the primary shards. Again, we need to think of distribution. Remember, the number of shards value pertains to the indexes, not to the cluster as a whole. This value specifies the number of shards for each index, not the total primary shards in the cluster. Replicas are primarily for search performance and a user can add or remove them at any time. They give you additional capacity, higher throughput and stronger failover. We always recommend a production cluster have two replicas for failover. After you configure an Elasticsearch cluster, it's critically important to realize that you cannot modify the shard allocation later. If you discover it's necessary to change the number of shards, you will need to re-index all the source documents. The primary shard configuration is comparable to a hard disk partition, in which a repetition of raw disk space requires a user to backup, configure a new partition, and rewrite data onto the new partition. The key consideration when allocating shards is your expectation for the growth of your data set. It's common to over allocate on shard count. In the early days, Elastic promoted this idea, but have since advised caution. It's good to remember that there's an additional cost for each shard that you allocate. Since a shard is essentially a leucine index, it consumes file handles, memory, and CPU resources. Each search request will touch a copy of every shard in the index, which isn't a problem when the shards are spread across several nodes. Contention arises and performance decreases when the shards are competing for the same hardware resources. Elasticsearch uses term frequency statistics to calculate relevance, but these statistics correspond to individual shards. Maintaining only a small amount of data across many shards will tend to result in poor document relevance. Our customers expect their businesses to grow and their data sets to expand accordingly, so there's always a need for a contingency plan. Many users convince themselves that they'll encounter explosive growth, but most never see an unmanageable spike. We all want to minimize downtime and avoid resharding. If you worry about rapid data growth, we suggest a focus on simple constraint. The maximum JVM heap size recommendation for Elasticsearch is approximately 30 to 32 gigabytes. This is a solid estimate on the limit of your absolute maximum shard size. For example, if you really think it's possible that you could reach 200 gigabytes, but not much further without other infrastructure changes, then we recommend an allocation of seven or eight shards at most. Don't allocate for an unreasonably high goal of 10 terabytes that you might attain three years from now. It's likely that you'll see some performance strain sooner than you'd like. We strongly encourage you to rely on over allocation for large data sets, but only modestly. You can still use the 30 gigabyte maximum shard size guideline that we gave you previously. We do, however, suggest that you continue to picture the ideal scenario as being one shard per index per node. A good launch point for capacity planning is to allocate shards with a factor of 1.5 to three times the number of nodes 
in your initial configuration. If you're starting with three nodes, then we recommend that you specify at most nine shards. Your shard size may be getting too high if you're discovering issues through the cluster stats APIs or encountering minor performance degradations. If this is the case, simply add a node and Elasticsearch will rebalance the shards accordingly. Just a reminder that we're omitting the specification of replicas from this discussion. The same ideal shard guideline of one shard per index per node also holds true for replica shards. Do you accumulate daily indices and yet incur only small search loads? Perhaps these indices number in the hundreds, but each index is one gigabyte or more. For these and similar problems, our simple recommendation is that you choose one shard. If you roll with the defaults for Logstash, daily indices, and Elasticsearch five shards, you could generate up to 890 shards in six months. Your cluster will be hurting unless you have 15 nodes or more. Think about it. Most Logstash users are infrequent searches, performing fewer than one query per minute. We recommend a simple economical setup. Since search performance isn't a primary requirement for such cases, we don't need multiple replicas. A single replica is enough for basic redundancy. The data to memory ratio can also be quite high. If you go with a single shard per index, then you could probably run a Logstash configuration for six months on a three node cluster. Ideally, you'd use at least four gigabytes, but we'd recommend eight gigabytes because that's where network speed gets significantly better on most cloud platforms with much less resource sharing. Shards consume resources and require processing overhead. To compile results from an index consisting of more than one shard, Elasticsearch must query each shard individually, though simultaneously, and then it must perform operations on the aggregated results. Because of this, a machine with more I.O. headroom and a multi-core processor can definitely benefit from sharding, but you must first consider the size, volatility, and future states of your dataset. While there's no one-size-fits-all shard allocation, we hope that you've benefited from this video. If you want to learn more, you can visit the QBox blog where we have an extensive library of Elasticsearch materials and learning tutorials. Thanks for watching.